Okay, so we have here a example of a uh, like the general triangle. It's going to have a whole bunch of equations that help us to change things from polar into rectangular. So let's get some more equations. JW. Start with this one, would please. Sine theta. And why do we use that we use that one? Because that's the way you learned it in the first place. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. But now we should rearrange it. Tell me what it rearranges to. You're going to want to multiply by R. Agreed. And you have all the polar elements. Exactly. That's why we do that. So we have the polar on the left and the rectangular on the right. Okay, good. Hand it off to somebody else. Uh, give me another one. That was sine. Give me another one. Yes, that counts as two. So we're up to three true equations so far. All right. So start with just cosine theta. I know you memorized it the other way, which is awesome, but we need to be able to, for people that haven't got it memorized, we got to be able to say, looking at this chart, cosine is what? And therefore, there we go. And then I know you memorized it, which is awesome, but rearrange it. R cosine theta is equal to x. Okay, that's up to one, two, three, four, five equations. Where's the sixth one? Yes, ma'am. Tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Opposite over adjacent. Okay, now I'm going to give you a equation in rectangular, and I want you to rewrite it that's a plain old-fashioned equation you've seen a million times to graph, right? But now I want you to rewrite it as a polar equation. There's two different ways you could do it, and one's easy and one's hard. If you can do either one, we're good replace some things so that you get rectangular out of there and polar into it. Now, last thing, this is an important catch. You have to solve it for either R or theta. Because in polar, you're not allowed to just leave it. When you change to rectangular, you can just leave it alone. But in polar, you got to solve it for R or for theta. Think about it. If you're going to put it in the calculator, well, you haven't seen that yet. I'll show you the calculator in a minute. In fact, well, if you're done with this one or when you finish this one, grab a calculator because you need your graphing calculator today. I'll pause for a second while you do that. Okay, so did you replace the y with r sine theta. It works. It's the hard way, but it works. And replace the x with r cosine theta. Okay, nothing wrong with doing it that way. It works, but you got to get it solved, and that's what makes it more difficult from here. Otherwise, if you just had to get r's and thetas in it, you'd be done. So what I would do is in one fell swoop, you can change this thing by dividing both sides by r cosine theta. r cosine theta. The r's cancel. That all cancels. And sine over cosine changes to one function, which is a really good thing. Tangent of theta equals 3. Who's got a better way that would have gotten it to that? I'm still not done, by the way. I have to do inverse tangent to finish. But better way, yes, sir. Yeah, divided by x. And why is that good? Because that's tangent. It says so right here. So you could have replaced this with tangent then and had tangent equals 3. Either way, tangent of theta is equal to 3. So how do I fix it? What do you mean fix it? Theta is not alone. So I'm going to put it to the inverse tan on both sides. And that's going to cancel this. Theta is inverse tangent of 3. Okay. That is polar. 
solved for theta. All right. Let's give you another one. This is just a point, and I want to change it. Change this point, two comma pi, into rectangular. That's polar. Change it to rectangular. Pictures are worth a thousand words. It might be nice to just kind of get a picture of what this thing looks like at two comma pi is where I'm at. So this is coming out two comma pi is over this way. There it is. It's not too tough to just look at it and say, oh, it looks to me like it's negative two comma zero, doesn't it? I mean, isn't that where that spot is? Okay, so see how drawing a picture can sometimes help? But here's the slow but good way. R cosine theta, comma, R sine theta. And R is 2, so it's 2 times cosine of pi. Hmm, better look that up. Pi is over here, cosine. And, and what is that spot that's over here at pi? Uh, it is negative 1, nope, nope, that's something wrong. No, that's right. Negative one comma zero. There we go. And then its cosine is the x of it. And so that's negative one. So two times negative one makes negative two, comma. R sine of theta is two times sine of pi. And the sine is the y. That's a zero. So two times zero is zero. There we go. Either way, you get negative two comma zero. Raise your hand if you got it right. Okay, good. That's changing from polar to rectangular. How about if I give you a rectangular? Can you change to polar? Let's see if you can. One comma one. Remember, that's rectangular now. Uh, now, some of you guys are going to draw a picture of this, which is really smart. Over one, up one, you put a dot right there. And then you go, well, if this has to be one of these polar deals, I usually need a radius. All right? And I need the angle. But that's not that bad, because I know this is one, and this is one, and that automatically makes that square to two. And then I know what triangle I'm in. What triangle am I in? The 45, so I got an angle, and I got a length of a radius, so it's root 2 and 45. All from a picture. Who's got a not picture way of doing it? Oh, question? Yeah. By the way, 45 could be pi over 4. Yeah. Good question. Depends on, uh, on what the directions say, but I want you to default to, to be sure, go with radians. But the reason I use 45 is because nobody memorizes this is the pi over 4, pi over 4 pi over 2 triangle. You memorize the 45, 45, 90. And so, but, good point. I really should finish by changing it to radians. Okay. Question? Yeah, how would you do with an equation? Anybody have an idea? What's the th thing we know from our big sheet? Yes? Uh, x squared plus y squared equals 1. I would agree that's something we know. So what's R in this case? We, unless we drew the picture, we didn't know a square root of 2, did we? But we could have figured it out. Keep going. So then we would do 1 squared plus 1. You're right. But well, remember with polar? You can have a negative radius in polar. So, but I'm going to just say, in this case, we'll say the negative is extraneous. Kind of cheating, but okay. So then r equals square root of 2. That's cool. 
We get the square root of 2 part. Now how are we going to get the angle? Ooh, tangent of theta equals y over x. And I know y and x, right? So tangent of theta equals 1 over 1. So tangent of theta equals 1. So then inverse tan of 1. And if you want to like draw a picture of this, tangent of theta equals 1 when, first of all, if it's inverse tan is what we're doing, we don't can't be here and it can't be here. It's positive 1, so it can't be here. Draw the picture. Tangent's opposite adjacent, square root of 2. And it forces you back to draw the picture again, which you could have done a lot faster if we'd have just done that in the first place. But it's working. And this is a 45. And then therefore the angle must be theta must be 45, also known as pi over 4. That's the definitely long and slow way. Do you see how pictures are good? Pictures really do help. They, they can show, show you how to solve problems way faster with pictures. All right. Now we're going to be graphing. So if you haven't already got your graphing calculator, I'll get it out. And uh, we're going to use it to do two things. We're going to graph some points, and then we're going to check them with the calculator and see if we did it right. Okay. So start with, for graphing, I'm going to hark back to when you had rectangular, you'd have some points, and then eventually the teacher would get to the part where they'd say, okay, you got a bunch of points, now we can write an equation, and the equation goes through this line, and you have this equation in rectangular. Well, we've, it would be like y equals uh, 2x minus 5 or whatever. Okay, now you've got rectangular down, but you get polar and your polar equation might be r equals sine theta. Notice, I know it bothers people sometimes that, that, that there's only variables in that. Well, there's variables in this plus one number. If you want to make you feel better, you could add a plus one because we have to be able to do that too. But anyway, one thing at a time. So, yeah, it's got two variables. So does this. It's got two variables. So you get to pick whatever you want, and you make an xy chart. If, he was gonna, if I was going to have you graph this, I'd say xy chart. Except now we make a what what? Our theta chart. Okay, so let's do that. Everybody make me an r theta chart for this one. And I'll give you a hint. You are only going to choose thetas that work nice, like 30, 60, 90, 45, 180. Wait a minute. You can do sine of 180? Sure you can. All of these quadrantals are really handy. There's 0 and pi over 2 and pi and 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. You can do sine of those really easy if you know what the point is. That's 0, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And then I'm also going to draw you the 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30, 60, 1, 2, square root of 3. Why did I draw all that? Because, oh, and one more. 1, 1, square root of 2 triangle. Because you are going to be asked without a calculator to graph r equals sine theta in polar. It will look different. If you're expecting a wave, you'll be very disappointed. It doesn't even look anything like a wave. So, would you please find, I'm going to say, four points on your r theta. Now I'll do the first one with you. Ever write down 30 for sine, or sorry, for theta? Yes, I could have written pi over 6. They're the same thing. Okay, what is sine of that? 1 half. You haven't moved your finger in a while. There's your first point right on your chart. Okay, I'd like you to get four points like that. That's a point. That come of that. Pause for a second while you try. Okay, seeing most kids being okay on this, you might have square roots in your answer, which don't let that freak you out too bad. It's not that big of a deal. So sine is 60, and then maybe 90 is pretty nice. Um, sine is 60. i got to go to this triangle, and here's my 60. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2, you expect me to actually graph that? Yes, we actually do. But 
you're going to get decimals for it. And the calculator, uh, I can't tell you how we're going to do this, but uh, you will be able to estimate the decimal. You won't be able to use the calculator to graph it, but you are going to be able to use a decimal for this. So right now, we use your calculator and say, what's root 3 divided by 2? It's a decimal, point something. Point eight six, all right. Point eight seven, if you're going to round it, okay. So point eight seven would be a good round for it. Good enough. All right. So then, um, wait. I put that in the wrong spot. Sorry. Point eight seven. Okay. Now ninety. I think you're going to like the nineties for sign. Signs why, right? Is that where 90 degrees is? No. Signs Y in here, though. Ah, there we go. Which is 1. Cool. It's just 1. That'll be easy to graph. All right. Let's do one more. Give me a nomination. What's a, what's a good one? 45. Okay. I was going to do 45. I do sine of 45. I go to this triangle. Sine of 45 is opposite over root 5. 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2. Thank you. And now we will graph it. I know you don't have much room, but if you look in this smart board file, you will find several graphs. You can use one for right now. I will just recreate one on the board up here. Polar graphs now. So you need some polar graph paper. I'm guessing that in notability, they're not that advanced to be able to give you polar graph paper. Do they? I don't think it's one of the choices. All right, so. So all you really need, circle. So where's 30 degrees? It's about here. How far is a half? Well, think of it this way. If we're graphing sine, what's the biggest sine could ever be? Then let's make the radius of our circle equal to 1. Does that mean this dot right here that I'm about to graph has to go on the circle? No, if the radius of the circle is 1, and it's supposed to be a half, then I should put it right about there. There's my first point. I went out a half. If this is a total of 1 out here, then this is a half. And this is supposed to be a 30-degree angle. I don't know if I did a great 30-degree angle, but good enough. Okay. What? You do not have to write in all that. You want to keep your graphs nice and clean. Um, so the next one's 60. I'm going to say that that's about a 60-degree angle. And then about 0.87, well, remember, 1's here. I'm not putting it there. 0.87's like a little less than 1, so maybe up there. Keep going. 90. That's straight up and down. That's right here. 5 or 2, also known as 90. And I'll put a dot right here at 1, because that's this point right here. I'll take a guess if that's the pattern. Kind of picture where it's going to go next. It went like this. Yep, it's got to go back down again, right? The sign, all students take calc. The sign stay positive in that next quadrant? Yes, the numbers will stay positive. Does it get smaller and smaller as you get closer and closer to pi? Here's a graph of normal sign. It goes like this, right? And here's pi over 2. I don't know. Oh, here's pi. Sorry. That's where pi is. This is 2 pi. So between 0 and pi over 2, sign's rising. Now sign's going to be falling again. Do you get how it's going to be falling again? That's how it's going to look. Maybe I should do it in all red because it's all one graph. It's almost like a circle. All right. Now what you'd expect for graphing sine, but you're using polar. Polar is totally different now the graphs are going to look. Let's check it. Well, let's do one more point then. Something bigger than 90 we could do. 
120. 120 is a good call because this is 30, 60, 90, 120. Okay, 120 is going to really depend on this triangle, which is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So it's really like doing 60 again. So 120 is going to revert back to basically, once you draw the picture of it and you realize where you are, you'll say, oh, it's basically this again. So it's basically that again. And it is. So then it's right here. So here's my points. And the last point's going to be at uh, 150 degrees, also known as a reference angle of 30 degrees. So you're going to get that one half again. And when it's all said and done, it makes that shape. Now let's actually go look at that on the graphs. Everybody grab your graphing calculator and type in, first of all, the mode. Everybody get to mode. And within mode, you have to choose the first time you're probably, your calculator's ever been in polar mode. Unless some of you have been playing with it. Okay. I don't know, do you, do you polar in any other classes? Okay. Ah, it's true. Uh, good question. Do you want to be in radians? Yes, be in radians and polar. All right. So once you're in polar and radians, you get y equals, and now it says r equals. Type in sine theta. Theta is where the x key is. See how it says x, t, theta, and n? It automatically self-selects to theta when you, it knows it's in polar mode. Hit graph, and there's your graph. It's really small. Could you zoom in on it? Sure. You can do a zoom box if you want to. I like the Z box. When you want to see Z graph better, you use Z box. No, it's not it's not like a circle. It's a little different than that. Now it looks a lot like a circle because now I stretched it. Because when I did my zoom box, the way I zoomed it in made it look like a circle. Okay. Well, let's have some fun with this thing now for a second. I'm going to give you one that's one of my favorites. And eventually, if you buy, we're going to do a lab based on this thing. But I'm not going to do it till Friday. By then, maybe we should correct the size lab. Anyway. <laughs> Eight, Stein. Ready? Now just say eight sine of theta and graph that once, and and you'll see something. Now I zoomed. I better do zoom six to get a normal zoom because I zoomed funny. What did it do? Just made it eight times what? Bigger. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay. Now, let's go play with it a little bit more and see what would happen if we made it uh, delete out the 8, but make it sine of 8 theta. Any predictions on what's going to happen? Well, here's what it does. Expect that one? Crazy. Didn't see that one coming, did you? Zoom in on that. Zoom in. You go to zoom in, and then you go enter. Zoom in again. If I just hit enter again, it should zoom in again. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That was just zooming in on sine of 8 theta. If you haven't zoomed in yet, it won't look like this, but. All right. Now, here's one of my favorite ones. I call it the bug. Eight sine of cosine of tangent. Eight sine of cosine of tangent. You have to have a theta or it won't work. Now that's me zoomed all the way in. 
But watch when you zoom back out, zoom six. It's a bug. Eight, sine, cosine, tangent of theta. All right, go to zoom six. Wait a minute. Let me let me just see why that should be happening. Hit your window button and see if all the settings are the same as mine. Okay. And go to your y equals and make sure you have eight sine parentheses, not sine times. Ah, I forgot the parentheses. No, I have eight sine. Okay. Eight sine cosine tangent of theta. Okay, now here's something that's really going to fry some brain cells. If you go to the window, think about this for a second. Why is x max 6.28? That is not just a random number. What is that? It's 2 pi. That makes sense that we're going to go, the max we're going to go to is 2 pi. Does that make some sense? That means go runs around, so to speak. Okay, how about that step thing? Do you think 0.13 was chosen randomly? What is it then? I'm guessing it's pi over something. Pi over blank equals 0.13. Is it pi over 12? Pi is a pi over 24. I can believe that, too. Pi over 24. Did you try it? Did you take pi divided by 24? Perfect. That's it. So it's pi over 24 is what they're counting by there. All right. So those are pretty small, right? What if we made them even smaller? It's going to plot more points. Because right now, it's going each little notch is 1 24th of a circle. So like it's like it takes the circle and divides it up into 24 little things, 24ths just on the top half, okay? 24ths of pi. Now, if you make this like, instead of 0.13, make, pick, make it 0 0.03. That'll make it quite a bit, have it, make it graph quite a few more points. And it will totally change how the graph looks. It starts off the same way. And then all of a sudden, wait a minute, it's got different there. And now it's graphing even more points. And you get how that looks different? <laughs> what did you think? Okay. Can we change that a little bit by making it 8 theta? Do you think the world will explode? And then I'll go to zoom 6. What's that one? That's that 8 sine cosine tangent, but I change it to of 8 theta. What did you make? Let's see. Oh, cool. So that was under... What was that? Oh, okay. So you just changed the 8 to a 200. Then did you 
Did you change the steps too? Oh. Zoom in. Try not to look it directly in the eyes. Ooh, that is pretty cool. <laughs> Try, yeah, did you zoom in and that's what it looks like? Yeah. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. So, enough playing with Polar. Polar does make really cool graphs. Probably one of the only things you'll remember from this unit. Um, but, honestly, if you can remember this big triangle and the six things that come out of it, X, Y, R, and if you can remember how to change graphs from polar to rectangular, that's that would be cool that you could remember it. Things like x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and therefore, wherever you see an r squared, you can replace it with an x squared plus y squared. And probably even like more basic, if you can remember that x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta, that would be really helpful to know for polar. Because you got to do now for the more advanced stuff, you got to be able to make graphs. Let's make XY charts. We did that already once. Well, let's make a little more complicated one. What if it was 2 sine, not, not Y, R equals, this is polar, 2 sine theta minus 1. Make me an XY chart for that. XY chart, are you insane? No. What's it supposed to be? I was waiting for somebody to say something. No, no, that would be nasty. Yeah, I'm sure it could be done, but... Okay, so, remember on things like this, you get to pick, so choose wisely. What's something good to pick for theta? 30, also known as pi over 6. So when you do that, do you get sine of 30 turns into a half? But that doesn't mean I put a half here. The radius isn't a half. The radius is 2 times that minus 1. So 2 times a half, which would be 1. 1 minus 1 is, did you have 0, 30? Good. All right, so you can tell these graphs get a little bit crazy and very tough to predict. You did not have any idea when we changed like to 8 theta that it would look like that. So it's very tough to predict these graphs and say, oh, I can know what that would look like in polar. You just have to plot some points and see what happens. Okay, so what's another one? Well, these are sometimes going to not work out real nice. Like I got to find sine of 60. Something I don't have memorized, so I go off to my side and go like this. Sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. So this is root 3 over 2. When I times that by 2, the 2's cancel nicely, but I have square root of 3 minus 1. Does anybody know what that is without a calculator? Then I would put square root of 3 minus 1, and that's a perfectly okay answer. On the test where you won't have a calculator, that's what you'd have to do. Wouldn't expect you to be able to know what square root of 3 is, so you leave your answer in terms of that. What are some other ones that work out nice? Remember the quadrantals, like 90 and 180, because they work out really nice. What's the sign of 90? you got to draw a picture, but here's 90, and that's 0, 1, and therefore the sign of that is what? 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 makes 1. There's three points on the chart. For typical test question, you'll have to do 6. That's it. Now, you can use your graphing calculator to do the graphing of it, okay? Not expecting you to graph these by hand. Uh, you should be able to graph a few points, but like that, how on earth are you going to know where to graph that? But you should be able to know where 0, 360, or 30 would be. 0, a radius, is just always at the origin. And 190, you should know that that's here. All right, so 
Let's look at your homework together. Everybody find the file 16.3. And I'm having trouble finding it. I'm going to pause for a second. All right, I want you to do for homework today, I want you to do problems 2 and 6. Uh, you may skip that number 8. I also want you to do number 16. And then you can skip a few until 41, 42, and 43. That's all I got for you for today.